guys, it's Reagan, and welcome back to an extra special travel-themed reading vlog because friends, we're going on a cruise together and Emily's here. That's right, this is kind of another location-changing reading vlog. We're gonna go on a little adventure together and for sure get some reading in. Basically, reading books in the middle of the ocean is the vibe I am trying to go for. But we have just arrived in our cabin, so I wanna give you guys a bit of a tour. And I do also wanna quickly disclose that this is a PR stay with Virgin Voyages, which is the cruise ship I am currently on, though this video is not sponsored. But let's chat about the books I hope to read and then give you guys a room tour, and then we're gonna go explore it. So I have packed four books for this four day cruise to give you guys an idea of the type of reading I'm hoping to accomplish. But I would say possibly these are the two primary books I hope to get through. The first is a book I've already started, which is Rosewater by Tate Thompson, which is a sci-fi thriller story set around this very mysterious kind of like alien biodome. We follow our main character as he's trying to investigate all of these recent deaths. And then I also have The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwen, which is book two to his new like Viking inspired fantasy series. I read the last book or rather the first book while also on vacation. So I thought it'd be fun to bring this one along as well. But I also have a contemporary read if I want to read that. And I also have a historical fantasy read if that calls out to me. Basically all of the books. But I did want to do a bit of a room tour before we get even more settled in. The room itself is super cute. We're currently on a four day cruise. And again, we're on the Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady, which is like a millennial focus cruise. Honestly, I was so excited about it. Um, Emily, who you guys have seen before, is on this cruise with me. And we even recruited her brother to come along. So we're just having a big old reading good time, just hanging out and uh, enjoying some sun and sand, if you will. So let me give you a tour. So this is the cabin Emily is investigating, but the room is super super cute. We have a full, I want to say like a queen sized bed. We have a little TV. And the bed comes apart too. Yeah. And the bed comes apart and can turn into a couch. And the whole room is like controlled by smart technology. So you can like change the mood of the room, change oh. the temperature, do all sorts of things. You can open the curtains with the touch of a button. There's us. And then I would say the coolest part of this room is the terrace. So it's the terrace. So we have like a little seating and we also have like a little hammock to enjoy and then we're currently at port we're in miami it's a bit of a rainy day but i'm sure it will clear up soon but that is the room first natural stop of our voyage is coffee that'll be emily's move I mean, yeah. and daniel enters the trip vlog it's his 30th birthday today Hello, we are dressed. Gonna head out to dinner here. We're trying one of the ship's restaurants called the Test Kitchen tonight, which is like an experimental dinner, like multi-course, very fancy. So I put on my emo cottagecore dress for the occasion. And Emily is also cottagecore vibes. We've just been rocking out to BTS, looking at books, relaxing, but uh, we're about to embark. We're about to go underway. Oh wait, I almost said yeehaw. <laughs> 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 this is the video. Yeah. My friend Fano, he will do one. Here you go, ready? Yes. Oh. And then for you, this is like this, your special is a mandarin survey. Good morning, everyone. Just starting out the morning with some fruit and coffee and some croissants. I've just been sitting out there reading. I've almost read 100 pages of Rosewater, so I'm gonna do a reading update here in a bit. Talk about our day and all of that, but first, coffee and fruit and bread. But hi friends, good morning. So today is the first official full day on our Virgin Voyages cruise, which is super exciting. And I have a big day planned to get 
reading done. I chaotically packed four full-length novels that I have barely started and honestly, mentally, <laughs> I feel like in theory I could at least read two of them which is my goal for this cruise in terms of reading but last night it was all about getting settled we had a really tasty dinner at the test kitchen just like the concept restaurant on board which was really neat and a really cool experience what I like about this cruise is they don't have any like formal fancy dining room instead they have a bunch of really tasty cuisine specific restaurants all across the ship like tonight we're going to be doing korean barbecue which i'm so excited for we're also going to do private room karaoke as like a pairing but today truly is all about relaxing and before i actually head out and find a spot to kind of post up for the next few hours i did want to give you guys a bit of information about rosewater which is what i'm currently reading this book is gripping me immediately, which is what I was really hoping for. I already knew I liked Tate Thompson's writing, but the concept of this book is just so cool. It's a, I want to say like first touch alien technology come to earth genre. I'm obviously not super versed on like sci-fi subgenres, but I think that's technically how it would be defined. But basically at some point, alien like biotechnology has arrived and specifically in Nigeria there's this biodome. Ever since it's arrived a community has kind of formed around it and Earth doesn't really totally understand the biodome itself but it does have mysterious healing abilities which is unique to it so a community has formed around it kind of hoping to not only get some of these healing abilities but also kind of unlock the mysteries of this place. It's now been on Earth for a few decades now, and our main character, Cairo, like a thief turned government agent, and he has like this ability to kind of sense the biodome itself. He's also a sensitive, so he can like sense other people's emotions and things. And at the beginning of this book, some mysterious stuff begins to happen, and he kind of gets pulled in, not only because of his government agency job, but also his own curiosity. But Cairo is such an interesting character. Um, the ability is super cool and I think this sort of like bizarre alien technology is very effective in terms of kind of pulling at least me in. I also like that it's not so much a clear technology but instead this almost like organic matter, this sort of fungus if you will and that's kind of how this like ability also formed it's more like a fungal infection and therefore all humans are kind of connected through these like filaments from this alien fungus and some people have now the ability to touch into that um which is kind of the idea so it's really cool so far really gripping and i think it's going to be more like a thriller with a sci-fi background but i think the concept is so cool and um i'm really i'm liking it quite a bit so gonna actually try to finish this today we'll see I feel like it's definitely gripping enough to possibly accomplish that uh, I'm about one fourth of the way through so I don't know let's go find a place to sit get some reading in also here's my coastal grandmother chic outfit exercise dress with linen shirt I am gonna be wearing socks with sandals and uh, not pictured is my big floppy hat my sunscreen in my bag in my backup book which I haven't fully decided what my backup book is or like what my second book is going to be as I did pack four books but I'm gonna go find a place to lounge there are so many really nice places just to like lay and relax around the ship and because there's no kids which I do love kids but sometimes it's nice to vacation in a place where there are no kids I feel like everywhere like there's lots of quiet places which for me very important so let's head out Do it 
Yeah, that was definitely the crab. It's, it's, I got the crab. It's served. Emily got two Benedicts. It's why limit yourself? Benedict, more French toast. I you let me know when you want the And after brunch pizza with a view. Some free dinner ice cream. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know which one to get. I got vanilla and like a brown butter. Tell get? me how the brown butter is. Oh, I got um, malted strawberry milkshake. Ooh, on a red velvet cone. Mm -hmm. Color it block. It does taste like a malted strawberry milkshake. Wow. Yeah. No false advertising here. Yeah. Hi, friends. I stepped away from enjoying some time outside, came back to the room which is so cozy and comfortable. The room does this thing when you open the door, like the curtains automatically open for you. I feel like I am in smart house, but I wanted to do an update of Rosewater by Tay Thompson because I am over just about 50% of the way through. I got some very solid reading in this afternoon and it was delightful. So this book is really engaging. It's incredibly intense, like from the concept to the setup and also structurally how it's written. I just feel like I'm just fully fallen into this book. Great vacation read because it is so fast paced. But as I said, obviously this is set in the community of Rosewater, which surrounds this biodome. Sci-fi wise, I do think it's really cool that the alien component is more of an organic nature and obviously has created changes to the society. I mean, it's not entirely clear to me as a reader yet like all of the changes but a lot of things are either like directly alluded to or just slightly hinted at like first and foremost there's this huge biodome in Nigeria but this organic alien material has definitely touched other places on earth resulting in uh, either like small encounters to like the United States like no one like the United States has been completely cut off like no one even knows what's going on over there um, at all. I also like that the magic has begun to form based off of this more organic nature of it all like I like that everything feels like living and breathing and like even like the magic itself. Um, and because the alien technology has only been around really in the history of humanity not that long like there's still a lot that people don't fully understand about the biodome about the magic and people are kind of just trying to figure things out as we go along but also the touchdown of this has really shifted governments um, like international policy pretty drastically as governments and people like work to try to be nimble in this very evolving situation. Our main character Cairo is such an interesting character to read from because first off he is a very talented uh, sensitive like he's very skilled at being able to harness and like go into this sphere um, in the mind sphere and investigate in it so that's cool. Um, also how I really like how this book is written it's set in the present we're following Cairo as he is a government agent he's basically like works for like the secret service of Nigeria and he has like various tasks and missions that he has to do but he also works like a normal day job as well um, but what's happening in the present is that other sensitives are starting to get sick and dying and no one really understands the root of what is going on um and the government is concerned one it's gonna happen to him but two it's going to like kill off all of the sensitives and caro specifically is very invested in figuring out what's going on because he doesn't want to die himself um, so that's kind of like the current present day mystery, but alongside the present day chapters, we also get chapters from his past, like when he's first uh, discovered by the Secret Service Agency, even chapters from his like adolescence and early adulthood. And we're kind of like shifting around to different important events in his life. I think provide not only great context for him as our main character, I feel really situated in his like point of view. And the chapters themselves all read so fast, like we have like three different almost like storylines going on within Caro's life and there's constantly like cliffhangers in all of them like in the present in the middle past and the in the past past so it's curious to try to like piece everything together and obviously as a reader I'm assuming these references to the past are going to make ties again to the present I don't know how exactly but I'm very intrigued I really love too that this has like a dash of sci-fi like it's more like our world and secret services and all of this if it also had this like weird alien touch point and i love seeing 
this book and seeing humanity kind of try to function around this big change and seeing all of that again through Caro, our main character. It's just really intriguing. The book itself functions quite like a political thriller, I would say, because there is this sort of medical emergency and there's even like like zombie vibes at times too, because all of this connects back to this biodome, which can heal people suddenly, which obviously can result in people having miraculous recovery from illness, but it's so good at healing that sometimes that people are literally brought back from the dead, but like not with a conscience or a brain, just like a literal walking zombie. So there's just a lot of strange stuff that occurs around this biodome and a lot of things that we don't fully understand. And it's just really good and like perfect, book to pick up that at least for me I feel like I'm just reading super quickly and I'm very curious to see what's going to happen next but I don't know I'm like fascinated with the world and the setup like the political system and like what's happening not only within Nigeria the Nigerian secret service and government but also like what's happening internationally because everything is connected especially as it relates to this alien technology and then Cairo's past Cairo's future like what is going on I don't know. And there's also like weird mysterious stuff happening within like the sensitive's mind space, like this sort of location, like where it's sensitives are able to go almost feels like this other worldly like mind space. It's kind of hard to describe, but it makes sense when you read it. But I'm really liking Rosewater. I know this is the first book to a trilogy, so I'm really expecting the plot to continue to balloon. And I have a feeling I'm not going to get all my answers or my questions answered in book one. But I have a feeling I am going to be gripped by this through and through and wanting to immediately pick up book two. But we shall see. But this is almost read. I'm going to try to read almost the rest of it today. That's my goal. Tonight we are doing Korean barbecue. I'm going to try to do private karaoke and trivia. We actually have trivia starting at six. So I think I'm going to get changed to get ready to do that. But I'm so excited. I have other books here. I don't know if I've showed these other books off yet, but I picked up ordinary monsters which is a new release in miami because i love to do book shopping when i'm traveling and then i also brought people we meet on vacation by emily henry if i felt like reading something more contemporary uh and i feel like this might be like a fast read so we'll see but right now i am completely sucked in by rosewater but i'm gonna go see where emily and daniel are and we're gonna do stuff for the rest of the evening but i just snuck back in the room to film this update really quick so Anyway, toodles. We are doing trivia. Emily thought of the most clever BTS related pun cruise or cruise pun. We're the Bora Hoy. <laughs> we just got second place in trivia. Bora Hoy. We got second place. Bora Hoy. Not immediately. Not immediately. Good morning, everyone. We have arrived in port, having a quick breakfast, and today we're going on a fun tour, so I'm looking forward to bringing you along. So Emily and I are both wearing purple. <laughs> yeah. We are coordinating. Emily's got our rainbow bucket hat on, too. All right, we're off. And we're off on our shore excursion this morning heading out into the world. Okay, have some many at you want, no problem. I pay for. Yeah. Wake up, stay stay. Oh, tasty. <laughs> Soaking up the rum tasting with a popsicle. Emily, what was your favorite rum? Um behind the camera. Uh, the coconut one. That was a good one. Yeah, what was your I favorite rum? The coconut one. <laughs> and how many rums did we try? The coconut one. <laughs> <laughs>
trying trying some local coffee. It's so good to taste it. <laughs> Just like that, we are back on the ship. We are pulling out of Puerto Plata and we're heading back out to sea. Um, today was really fun. We basically did a rum tasting and then we got to see some uh, like botanical plants from native flowers, rare flowers to cacao and other cool plants that live on this island. Um, but it was definitely a hot and sweaty day. So I think we're gonna lay a bit low tonight and just do a uh, food pickup from their super tasty like quick serve area we've been eating at their restaurants every night which are so good um but i think i'm gonna go pick up like a sushi roll and then maybe some ramen later tonight and just eat it in the room or just eat it in that area we shall see i did immediately shower when i got back <laughs> i'm looking a little windswept <laughs> Um, and then I for sure also want to do some reading later because I haven't done any reading today because we basically got up and got off the boat, but it's evening. It's time to, it's time to relax, you know? Post dinner popsicle, came in, immediately got bread. And I'm walking over to the sushi. An iconic tropical film. And by tropical, I just mean there's an ocean. Also, this cruise has so many great movies and you can just pick them from this iPad and then just it automatically puts them on the TV screen. It's truly the future. Good morning. We are at sea, day three. Um, at sea days are so fun. One, because they have like so many activities, but also it's a great time to get some reading in, which is my plan today. I'm just wearing overalls, comfy clothes, and I think we're going to go figure out what we want for breakfast. We're deciding between like diner classic breakfast food or eating at more of like a restaurant. So we're gonna investigate. Let's journey off. <laughs> Free breakfast bread. Course one, avo toast, brioche grilled, PB and J. We're in the elevator and we're gonna take you guys on a little tour of our favorite parts of the boat so far before we sit down and do our reading for the next like five hours. First is this game area, which has air hockey, foosball, and an entire arcade. Emily and I spent a lot of time in here losing to each other. <laughs> There's also a little gamers lab trunk with all of these games and they're like good games. There's like Settlers of Gatan, Sequence, like so many fun games that you can play and check out. It's probably our favorite activity. Obviously as you guys have seen many times, because we've come here many times, there's also ice cream with so many delicious flavors. It's like gelato. Our favorite way to pass the time is in here, which is ooh, unveiling. Love the door. Love the door. This private karaoke room where the entire ship can. Oh, yeah, we could definitely. Oh, wow, there's so much space. You just put your name down, room is yours. The entire ship will hear a scream, BTS, as they did before. My favorite thing about the ship is how there's just so many places to lounge. Like, everything is comfortable to sit on and to lay on. And there's so many places to use and just to sit with a good book and enjoy the scenery. Just make sure to wear your sunscreen. Back with another reading update as I have less than 100 pages left of Rosewater and honestly I feel like I can't say too much more about the plot because spoilers but what I can say is the plot has really picked up. I feel like this book has always read fast especially because we're shifting from like present past and further past 
but each chapter almost feels like it's getting shorter and shorter and we're shifting between timelines quicker and quicker as the plot really has begun to escalate and it's a cool combination of like political conspiracy and sci-fi and this illness that is like very quickly taking over all the other sensitives truth be told i really don't know where it's going another aspect of this book i like too is that our main character Cairo, is very capable as a sensitive like he's very good at it and he's like an agent and stuff for the government but he also is kind of a gray morality character like he is imperfect and he would describe himself as such he's kind of apathetic he has a hard time connecting with other people he more like he sees people as ways to use them and it might be due to the fact that he can like see into people's brain so he's constantly kind of inadvertently like getting signals from people and I think it makes it harder for him to make human connections and we kind of see like patterns of behavior in present and past chapters as well but you also see him like trying to fight against that natural instinct or that probably that barrier of protection he's built up to not be hurt by people within this book, which is also kind of an inter interesting component, but the setting and the concept is really gripping. I truly have no idea where it's going and it's getting even more wild. And because this is really like a political thriller, I don't want to say too much, but the government conspiracy is very solid. And I just love that it's kind of set in a time period where the understanding of the consequences of this alien bio technology is like very unknown. I just want to know what's going to happen next. So I plan on finishing this book today. I'm going to go grab some lunch, I think. I had to come back to the room for a little and do some work, but I just wrapped that up now. So I'm going to eat, read, and then I actually have a facial later, you know, so you're going to see me later and I'm going to be glowing, complexion glowing, you know? So anyway, that's my reading update. I'm going to head back out reapply the sunscreen and uh, have a relaxing rest of the day. Second lunch. You. When you go into a new room, you will grab one of these cards from the top of the thing. Only. From my facial what do we think is my skin looking glowy no foundation on but we're actually about to head out to dinner the facial was super relaxing i also bought some new skincare products as you do when you're on vacation i'll set you down here but um we're going to the italian restaurant tonight which should be super delicious and i think we're just going to Continue hanging out. We played at the game room for so long. What's the game we played, Emily? Uh, be Betrayal on Hill House. House or House on the Hill. It was so fun. And it was like so easily being able to play with three people, which I feel like is really hard to find with like a board game, but I'm honestly gonna buy it when we get home. Their game so selection fun. here is so great. And, and I also finished my book. So I will wrap yeah. that up. Yeah, book one down for the trip. Book one down. So I'm gonna start book two tomorrow. I still haven't decided which of the books I wanna read. I think I'm leaning towards possibly contemporary for like speed, but I'll, I'll let you know when the decision has been made. But I have my lipstick, I have my purse. We're going to head out now and I can't wait. <laughs> Cheers, we're at the cocktail bar on board with some jams. Jimin's got no jam, so we're enjoying the, oh my God. We're enjoying the ocean. <laughs> my day for tonight, we're trying out the Italian restaurant. And there's the view. Starting with a fried artichoke. I'll give you a real-time reaction. Calamari. Mm. Yeah. We're already back. Private room karaoke. Cue it up, Emily. 
Hi friends, so it is the last full day. We are in the Bahamas. The water looks so blue. I will show you and it's going to be a beach day, which means a little bit of water, lots of shade and lots of good reading. I've been thinking long and hard since I, hold on, since I finished Rosewater, which I owe you guys a total and complete like update on. Um, it was a wild time in the end. <laughs> um, and I will do that check in in a bit, but I've been thinking really long and hard, like what book I want to read next. I was thinking, you know, I should read People We Meet on Vacation because it feels right for the vibe, but I don't know. I just can't do it. I really am just feeling Viking fantasy book, you know, like gruesome, cold, dark fantasy book. I just feel like really matches the Caribbean vibe. So that's just my point. That's just my opinion. But it is a little past noon. We woke up this morning a little later and we got breakfast, which was delicious. I'll overlay some clips. A morning breakfast before we go out to the water. But now it's time for a nice bit of relaxing. I got my chunky book. I have so much sunscreen on. We're ready to go. Just look at that water. It's so blue. It's so blue. We've arrived. At the beach club. Ooh, I can't wait to get into the ocean. Friends, so we are back from the beach. It was so pretty. Not only the beach club, but just like in general, the water and being able to sit and enjoy the ocean was such a treat. I did get a good amount of reading in and I will talk about my initial thoughts of Hunger of the Gods. But first, I do feel like I need to wrap up Rosewater because I finished it and just never told you what I thought. Um, yeah, this book was just so interesting outside of just the setting and the concept being, in my opinion, just so original. I haven't read a lot of like, I don't even know if I'd call this like first contact, but in some ways it has that vibe because technology was just sort of dropped off and it kind of changed humanity forever from there. And I just liked how the story continued to grow on itself and it just had a very intense pacing, which makes me feel like it was great for a vacation. I feel like I've gone on and on, but I was really, um invested in this book and I was pretty hooked with the ending as well and we'll be for sure continuing on with the rest of the series and then from there I picked up The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwen. This is book two to the Bloodsworn series the first one being The Shadow of the Gods which this is like a Norse Viking inspired fantasy series. It's multi POV incredibly gruesome and essentially the setting is this very much Norse inspired world very Viking very gruesome very dark very like stark um, and the setup in general is is that the gods used to kind of roam the land but they've been killed off they have died off but they're like bones and things still possess power so people kind of collect these tokens but within like viking culture-esque fantasy vibes there are like war bands and individuals who are like seeking glory through combat um collecting these tokens and becoming the most powerful is inherently just really important within the society we follow a variety of characters uh who are some of them are seeking glory, many of them more so are seeking revenge, and they all are going on their own journeys, sometimes with other people, sometimes a bit more solo, and slowly they become more interconnected throughout the first one, and it again kind of ties back to the gods, um, the first one called the Shadow of the Gods, so like what was left by them, this one is now called the Hunger of the Gods, so very intense, very brutal, probably one of the most brutal fantasy books I've read in a while, but John Gwen writes combat really well. It's very visual, if you will. But anyway, I picked the sequel up today. I really liked the first one. Um, what I was excited about was that there is a very in-depth <laughs> uh, reminder of what happened in the last one and like a very extensive character list, which was super helpful. Obviously, this is a very long book. So the 50 pages I was able to get through today, uh, obviously I have much left. 
Uh, and it truly does literally take place exactly where the last one ended. So I appreciate that because it was an incredibly intense ending. So we're literally just like, boom, right back to where we left off. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and yeah, I'm just really connected to a lot of the characters in this book, particularly Orca is one of my favorite characters in fantasy right now. I love when motherhood takes center stage in fantasy stories, especially ones that center combat. It's just very rare. And I feel like that's happening and I like it. So that's the plan there. But we are about to head out for our final dinner of the trip. We're going to Pink Agave on board, which is gonna be delicious. I already know. And I think I'm gonna go bother Emily on the balcony where we have spent a many an hour and ask her what her favorite part of the trip was. And we'll do like a little trip recap. Well, we were going to talk about our favorite moment of the trip, honestly. For me, mm -hmm. I just loved relaxing mm -hmm. and reading and just enjoying and exploring the ship. We played a lot of board games, which was super yeah, fun. Yeah, it was awesome. And karaoke was super fun. Yeah. And I think the real highlight too would be the food. Uh huh. The food was so good, and there's like such a good variety. So it's fun to have like different dinner at different places and at different vibes. Yeah. Vibes, you know. Yeah, and sample like I got to try a lot of different food that I hadn't tried before. Oh, yeah. That Reagan would order for me. And Emily was very adventurous. Yeah. So that was really fun. Um, and I thought like the combination of the night when we did Gunbay and then the Korean barbecue restaurant mm -hmm. and then the best. It was so good and it was so fun too. Like we got to play games. Mm -hmm. It was like very interactive. Yeah, we it was really game. interactive. We love a game. Um, and then we went and did the private karaoke afterwards. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really fun night. It was a good pairing. Mm -hmm. It was a you. Well, the footage is included, so it was a good night. It was a good night. Yeah. And then also, so you were mentioning you like just relaxing. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things to do was just like every morning we would wake up and like order coffee and oh, fruit yeah. to the room. It was so nice. And I would just like sit out here and eat fresh fruit and drink like coffee on the balcony and, and stare at the ocean. Look at the ocean and just chat with you. Like it was nice to have those little quiet moments. Yeah. I always really love, especially on more like relaxing vacations, just like the vibing, you know? Like, yeah. I love activities, but then I also just love to sit we and, vibe. and yeah. try to just read as many books as possible. And so far, I've almost had 500 pages for this cruise. Not, yeah. not bad. And I felt like you were able to find, like, a new place to relax every day. Oh, yeah. Like, there were so many coffee spots. Yeah. So, yeah. Solid. Oh, was so quick. That was so quick. They were ready for us. <laughs> I grabbed two. Yum. Hey friends, and welcome to the end of the vlog. A few days later, I'm back home, I'm settled. The cruise was honestly so much fun. And before I dive into my wrap up of the books, I do have a link down below if you guys wanna learn more about Virgin Cruises. Again, this was a PR stay, but for the books I completed, the first was obviously Rosewater by Tay Thompson. This book is just over 400 pages. And I read it, I feel like, really, really quickly. It definitely is more of like a sci-fi thriller. I've talked about it at length. And I just found the book itself to be very unique. The ending was bizarre. Like, I almost feel like I need to reread the ending to make sure I fully understood everything. It was definitely not something I could have guessed, which is always a refreshing thing to encounter. And then obviously from there, I did start The Hunger of the Gods. First and foremost, grateful this book had a very comprehensive summary to remind you everything that happened in the last book because I did forget a lot. <laughs> a good overview of all of the characters, who they are, where they came from, and then also just like a plot summary. It was like a double summary. It was so, so helpful. So anyway, I read about the first 70 pages of this. Not much has happened yet. This book is very long, but it does take place basically where the last one takes off so like it is intense from page one but it's kind of like resetting the board a bit so we can start whatever is going to be happening in book two but i really love the ending of book one i love this concept of like vikings and gods and like uh being the children of gods because people can have god blood in them and then they have like special abilities it's just well realized and I'm looking forward to see how the rest of the book is going to play out. But that is my reading wrap up for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you soon with another video soon. Goodbye.